In this question and answer episode of the Dr. Clay Show, we're going to talk about one of the causes of a swollen knee, specifically patellar bursitis. What is it? How do you treat it? And how do you avoid it? Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, and welcome to another episode of the Dr. Clay Show. Now, as I said, this is a Q&A episode. Now, this question actually comes from a relative of mine. We'll call him Bill, since his name is not Bill. And I want to point out that normally I do not uh, rank questions in terms of which ones to answer and whether or not I know the person or not. However, this is a relative, you know, and relatives get you Christmas gifts, birthday gifts, and they help you move and stuff like that. So what can I say? Now, Bill writes in and asks me a question about his swollen knee. His question is, what is inflamed knee bursitis on the top side of the kneecap? I've had it twice this year. It goes away after about a week. It swells up and gets sore. I ran a fever for a day or so, and then it feels better, but it's still a bit sore and is warm and red. What do you think? Well, I think I'm glad that's not my knee, but I also think that we can uh, give you a little info here and uh, get you pointed in the right direction, at least, in terms of um, what to do to get this thing taken care of and at least explain what this thing is. Now, let me point out both to you, Bill, and to everyone watching regarding this episode and every single episode of the Dr. Clay Show, this is simply for information. I'm simply giving you information. It is not and never will be, never was intended to be a diagnosis or a treatment plan. You always, and I repeat always, need to see your doctor about this or any other condition because you never know what might be going on. In the case of patellar bursitis, tuberculosis could actually be, it's rare, but it could be associated with the condition. And if that's the case, you need to know that. So always, uh, when in doubt at all, go to your doctor and get it checked out. All right, now let's first look at what is patellar bursitis. Now let's break the word down first and let's look at this itis part, which essentially just means inflammation of. So if you have tendonitis, you've got inflammation of a tendon or swelling of a tendon and in this case we're talking about swelling of a bursa which is b-u-r-s-a if you have one of them in the plural version of that you add an e on the end now a bursa is essentially a fluid filled sac that uh, its job is to reduce friction now i'm no artist but let me try to illustrate here all right, so let's say that is your skin. Now, the, there are two bursa that we're going to talk about here that is probably associated with your condition. Now, this one here, this fluid-filled sac, or this bursa, notice it's between the skin and your patella, or kneecap, which is right here. Now, this one, this bursa, is called the prepatellar bursa. Prepatellar bursa, whereas... The one down here is called the infrapatellar bursa. Infra as in below. Okay, now most commonly, I should point out that most commonly, the um, when we're talking about patellar bursitis, we're typically talking about the prepatellar bursitis variety, or this one up here. So this bursa here is the most commonly affected. And that thing will swell up huge. I mean, there's practically no limit to how big it will get. This thing can get huge as well as can this one. Now, the reason it swells to begin with and gets inflamed is because of injury to it. So whether you bang it, you know, a little bit all the time, like let's say your wife is making you uh, clean the floor because you've been bad. Well, if you're down on your hands and knees cleaning the floor, then you can irritate this bursa right here, and this thing can get swollen and huge. So it's it's either a 
a small but sort of ongoing irritation, or it can be even from just one traumatic blow, like if you're playing football or something like that. And then likewise, same for the infrapatellar uh, bursa or infra infrapatellar bursitis. Uh, let me point out that you also may see the term subcutaneous associated with these as uh, that means under the skin. And of course, these are under the skin. Okay, now of these, like I said, the prepatellar type is the more common, but there are um, whether it's the prepatellar variety or the infrapatellar, you've got two different types of patellar bursitis that we need to look at. And this is important here. Um, now we've got the aseptic variety, and then we've got the septic variety. Now, the septic means that it essentially has bacteria in it, so, or, or it's uh, infected. Whereas the aseptic variety is just sort of a, uh, just a general swelling or kind of like water on the knee, as some people call it. But when you have swelling, when you have um, these little green things are bacteria in the, uh, you know, in the uh, subcutaneous prepatellar bursa here, if, if that thing is full of bacteria, which a doctor will have to, unfortunately, um, typically take a little sample out of it uh, with a needle and a syringe and see if it has bacteria in it. And if it does, then it's the septic variety. And uh, if not, then it's uh, the aseptic variety. But it is very important that you and your doctor get that figured out which, uh, which variety it is. Now, a couple of things lead me to believe that you may have the septic variety and there may be um, there may be an infection in there and that's because you said you have a fever and that it's warm and red typically and it being sore actually the um, the septic variety does tend to or the uh, the infected variety does tend to be a bit more sore than the aseptic as a general rule and in fact but it, actually neither one of these are typically that painful they just they more um, look odd and are a bit annoying but they can be sore I mean they can be sore anytime but especially when you squat down and bend your knees all the way nevertheless the fact that you have a fever and it's warm and red kind of leads me to believe that there's a little bit of an infection going on so definitely need to get that uh, checked out now the that can get infected simply from a uh, from a cut or a puncture wound on the top of the area there could be different causes but nonetheless get it checked out to determine which variety it is now in either case how do you treat prepatellar bursitis and we're going to say prepatellar because that is the most common type well as a general rule a good method of conservative treatment is the acronym RICE and that's rest ice compression as in like maybe putting an ace bandage around it not too tightly of course just fairly lightly and elevation all of these help to reduce the inflammation or the itis associated with that swollen bursa. So the ice causes a vasoconstriction, which uh, decreases the blood flow and helps reduce the inflammation. And the compression just basically helps to squeeze the excess fluid out of there, whereas the elevation helps return that fluid back to the heart. Now, so this is uh, generally a good acronym, rest, ice, compression, or a good, um, you know, good rule of thumb, like even if you sprain an ankle or so on, when you have um, various things that are swollen, so to speak. Uh, the rice is a good rule of thumb. Now, I should mention here that um, you want to generally ice the area for uh, no more than 20 minutes, less than or equal to 20 minutes on, so to speak, or with ice and then followed by about roughly or not less than let's make that greater than actually so at about 40 minutes off so because you don't want to do it 
too often. Even uh, too much of a good thing is not good. So if you keep ice on there too long, it can have the opposite effect, actually, and promote inflammation. So generally speaking, up to 20 minutes per hour or until the area goes numb and because you don't want to get frostbitten or overdo it in general. Okay, so um, rest ice compression elevation. Likewise, your doctor may also recommend an, a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug or an NSAID as we call them. Uh, for example, ibuprofen is uh, one example of an NSAID used to treat this uh, prepatellar bursitis. Now, it's important that you not take ibuprofen for too long at all, just short periods of time because it can uh, really irritate your stomach and cause uh, gastritis or swelling of the stomach and uh, stomach lining and, and eventually even lead to ulcers and things. And in fact, most people that have problems, uh, gastritis and, and ulcers and things associated with NSAIDs don't even realize they do. Point being, use caution when taking NSAIDs and don't take them for too long. Now, if the area happens to be septic of the septic variety and has bacteria in it, then typically an antibiotic will uh, anti-bi... I can't talk and write at the same time. It seems uh, again if you have if if you have the septic variety or have an infection in there, then an antibiotic will typically be used to uh, to kill the bad bacteria in there. But I want to point out that it not only kills the bad bacteria in that uh, in this uh, bursitis, if that's the case. It not only kills this bad bacteria in there, but it kills the good bacteria as well. It is non-discriminatory. Antibiotics will just kill the bacteria, period. So it will also kill the good bacteria in your GI tract. So it's important to use uh, both during and after you take a, a round of antibiotics. It's important to take a probiotic. Um, or at least to eat yogurt and or sauerkraut and things like that that will boost the level of good bacteria in your GI tract. Now just to throw an idea out there, uh, and this is totally just an idea, and the, but this is uh, something I would consider doing if I had uh, general prepatellar bursitis, not necessarily the septic variety, which uh, does seem that it does necessitate antibiotics. But uh, if you got general bursitis, one thing that I would do, and again, I'm not saying to do this, but taking uh, curcumin, curcumin is a natural anti-inflammatory, as are the omega-3 fatty acids. The omega-3 fatty acids have a natural anti-inflammatory effect. So it's, uh, I mean, it's pretty safe to say that these two are generally safe anyway, and arguably, well, in fact, they both uh, research points pretty strongly that these are just good for you overall. And they had this anti-inflammatory effect. So if it were me, that's something that I would consider taking if you... Um, you know, just generally speaking, for a uh, bursitis in general, or tendonitis for that matter. Um, may not help that much, but it uh, sure does not seem like it would hurt. Now, how do you avoid prepatellar bursitis? Or if you, let's say you get rid of it, or patellar bursitis in general. How do, you, how do you avoid it once you've gotten rid of it, or if you don't want to get it all together? Basically, it's just to you have to remove the insult. Whatever it is that you did to it, and it tends to be some sort of uh, kneeling activity, like cleaning the floor, like Cinderella, maybe kneeling down to armor all the tires on your car, whatever it is, you've got to remove the insult or whatever it was that caused the inflammation or irritation to begin with. That's the key. And since this is um, 
typically it's a, this thing is the prepatellar bursitis is often called housemaid's knee because of the um, that it's so commonly associated with you know kneeling down and cleaning the floor or, or cabinets or whatever is down low a good uh, sort of preventative treatment is to it maybe sounds a little sissy five but is to wear knee pads the knee pads will reduce the uh, or eliminate the irritation to these bursa to begin with so that is the key to um, both getting rid of it short term and but especially making sure that it stays gone for good once you get rid of it is to um, don't irritate it anymore and wear knee pads whenever you're kneeling on the ground or if you're playing uh, football rugby whatever the case then um, even wear knee pads in that Okay, Bill, I hope this helps you out and helps you to uh, take care of that puffy, red, swollen, tender knee of yours. And don't forget, I wear a double XL shirt and a size 12 shoe come Christmas time. And the rest of you guys, likewise, I hope this helps you out and gives you a little insight into patellar bursitis and what it is, how to treat it, and how to avoid it. Till next time, take care.